Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking about basically how documentation and customer support can work better together to create better docs. Um, again, Neil Kaplan. I am Senior User Assistance Manager, which actually means I am the documentation team here. Uh, it's me. I've been a tech writer for just over 20 years, um, working at large companies and a few startups as well. Um, I mean, this company, for example, is about 85 people, and I've been here since September. We do data analytics, behavioral analytics, um, and again, I'm the doc team. Uh, how did I get here? So this is, I, I really want to talk about how I started on this, how I, why I want, I'm telling you that we need to work with customer support. What's in it for you? What happens if you don't do this? You know, what do you do to get this going? What do you do to keep it moving? And then really, what's in it for me? I heard this quote on a podcast recently, and I like it because it's, it's a lot of what I'm pushing is we can all go into work and fill eight hours really easily. We all have a nice task list. There's a lot of things to do. What really matters is how do you know what's the priority? How do you really you know, move the needle? How do you really have an effect? And how do you make sure that what you do, what you write, really matters? And I'm going to start with a story. And once upon a time, when software came in boxes, and this wasn't the software I worked on, but they were fairly close to us, and the boxes looked kind of like that. The documentation team was in sunny Menlo Park, just down the road, and we worked with product managers and engineers, mainly, and yeah, actually mainly engineers and a few product managers. Customer support was nowhere near us, absolutely nowhere near us. They were very, very far away in Dublin. And we had no contact. Thank you. <laughs> we had no contact with them. We never talked to them. Nothing. But we did have in the document, in the books and, you know, the revolutionary PDFs, we had, hey, if there's a doc issue or any problem, send email to this. And of course, there was a support team. Thing is, again, we never talked to them. And what happened, and this is great, they would take any doc bugs or any requests, put them in a file on a server somewhere. And at some point I said, hey, we've got this thing in the docs that says email us or call us if there's an issue. What happens to those? And someone said, oh, go ask Tom. So I asked Tom and he said, yeah, they're on a server. Yeah, I think I know where they are. Let's go find them. So all of these were put into files. And the only way that we would find them is when Tom remembered to go and look at them, which meant they were forgotten. You know, maybe Tom would remember once a year. Maybe not. Tom, it was no, not, sorry, different Tom. <laughs> you know, Tom would forget. So we could pretend that everything was just fine. We didn't see any problems. Shoot, I didn't start that going. Uh, we didn't see any problems because, you know, out of sight, out of mind, they were so far away. So, you know, do we believe this? We certainly weren't doing this. We weren't providing excellent service. We had no idea. You know, we'd get a few emails, but again, that's for the users who bother to email for the docs. And blah, blah, blah. So why should we care? Documentation is self-service self customer support. So it's really the first step where you want the users, when they have a question, when they have an issue, can I do this? Hey, I need help. Go to the documentation, answer their questions. Now, it's often talked about in terms of ticket deflection. And can we just deflect those tickets and not bother support at all? Um, I agree to an extent, but I think it's more like ticket direction because I think we, st we want to encourage customers to talk to us. We want to hear what they have to say. We don't want them to go away. We don't want them to shut up and be quiet and never bother us. What we want is to say, OK, is your question answered in the docs? Great, here they are. Uh, do you have something that isn't answered in the docs? Here's how we can help you. And then we, as documentarians, can pull this information into the documentation. And happy customers means more money. So if you're answering the questions, if you're solving their problems, they're happy. They're going to renew. They're going to upgrade. They're going to tell their colleagues, hey, this is a great product. Hey, I've gotten great support from, these, from this company. 
And that's really, really, really what we want to do. We really want to encourage that. We want to encourage that communication. Um, and just let them, and again, it's all support. We're supporting them too. So another story, um, I, was at a very, I was at a different meetup um, years ago where we had the, the, the customer support team lead would present and then the documentation lead was, would present. So there were two different teams, customer support and documentation. The customer support had a knowledge base and they had a really, really big knowledge base. It was at least hundreds, probably thousands of articles. Documentation has a help site, a different site. So I was kind of silly and I said, excuse me, do you talk to each other? Why do you have different sites? Are, 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 these, are you using the same tools? Nope, there's a wall. Different tools, different processes. They were not, they would sort of communicate and talk, <coughs> but they really had, they were very sim separate walled gardens, just very separate areas. Different tools, different processes. And so I said, why? Why are you doing this? You've got information, and also, how does your customer know what to do? You know, if your customer has a question, where do they go? Do they go to the docs? Do they go to support? And why should they have to figure that out? And the, they looked at me very patiently and said, this is because documentation is prescriptive. It's how the product should be used. And customer support is descriptive. That's how people actually use the product. And so when questions came in and they said, hey, how do I do this? Support would say, oh, here's how you do it. Oh, and maybe there's some docs. I don't know, whatever. But again, you have the same information in multiple places. You have customers who don't really know where to go. And you also might very well have different answers in these places. And these teams aren't talking to figure out, hey, let's make sure these things match. And let's make sure that our customer gets the same answer. Or probably just even better, one answer. So what happens when the teams don't work together? You get redundant effort. You're doing the same thing over and over. Two teams doing the same thing over and over, maybe slightly differently, but probably different tools. But they're writing essentially the same content. They're answering the same questions, or similar, or things that should be the same. But again, it's redundant effort. And what you're doing is you're wasting people's time. And when you're at a company, time is money. You know, the company is paying two people to do the same thing. That's ridiculous. You get frustrated customers. Because again, why doesn't the docu documentation answer the questions I really have? What am I paying for? What's going on here? You get frustrated customer support because they are looking at your documentation too. They are reading it, they want answers. And if they're not finding the answers, hopefully they're filing bugs, but maybe they're just figuring it out on their own because they're saying, look, our documentation is useless. This is where we get, the documentation is useless, just call support. Well, again, we don't want that. We don't want customers to go away, but we want them to be able to answer their questions and figure out really how to use the product, how to use it more, how to use it better. So, oh no, what do I do? First thing is meet your support team. This is our customer support team. Um, going across, we have John and Danny and Max and, and Patrick and Alexis, who is actually the, the manager, the director in charge, and Mina, and they are freaking brilliant. You know, it's a fairly small support team. They actually are very cheerful people, but that's because I work well with them. <laughs> no, they're, they're really great. They're very helpful. Um, and it's really, again, meet your support team. Build a relationship. Figure out not only their names, do they have areas of expertise? Um, at a previous company, we really had that. We had, Fernando was the API guy. Melanie knew integrations and just, just new, and new payment methods. These were the people who really specialized. Our team is fairly small, so they're much more generalists. Um, but still, I mean, we've got, I mean, Alexis is, again, the director. She's very busy, but she's also the person who has probably the broadest product knowledge. And she also has a data science background. And since we do data analysis, that is incredibly important to me. She is um, probably my best subject matter expert. Um, the problem is finding time. What I, really, what I really have found is when she's traveling, that's when I give her docs to review. Because if she's stuck on a plane for five hours, she has nothing else she can do. It's great. I mean, it's just, that's what you want to do. Um, 
but you build a relationship so they will come to you. So they will say, hey, I looked in the docs, I couldn't find this, or we have a customer question, or are we addressing this? And if we're not, hey, you know, this is something interesting. And also figure out how do they prefer to communicate. I mean, here we use Slack a lot. Um, we use email a bit less, but we, you know, emails for much longer things. We use Slack all the time. Often for, hey, you know, I've got this issue, can I come over and talk? Yeah, sure. Let's, you know, let's do that, let's find a room and go through this. The other piece is review support tickets. Now, at our company, it's kind of manageable. I realize that at larger companies it gets more unmanageable, but it's great to look and just review them and say, hey, is this, I found a bug? Okay, don't worry about it. Or, you know, this does something, you know, well, I've noticed that some things are returned. It's really, look at this, are these questions? Are they usage questions? Are they things that you can mine for the documentation? Are they actually customer use cases? Or could they be instructional? Could they be tutorials, examples? Those are great if you can take some of that, just genericize them, turn these into <coughs> usable examples. So you really want to look at how do I, or I want to do this, or you know, I've looked at the documentation, but, and those are always kind of painful, <laughs> when it's, you know, I've looked at the documentation, I've read it, I still can't figure this out. And that kind of hurts, but it's also really great, because then I know, okay, they really, you know, that's where they're looking, they're reading this, yay, and they need more info. Um, most support <laughs> systems will have automated systems, so this, you know, you can say is a documentation error, or a doc, you know, we need docs about that. That's great. Um, another thing that, that your support team can usually do is add a tag. If, it's, if this is something that they're answering, maybe it is you know, an actual data analytics, but there's a documentation component. It can be tagged, they can set these up so that it, se it sends you email, it reports it to you. And maybe you just have these filtered to some other file that you look at every so often, but as long as you're regularly reviewing this information, that's what you need. You know, have anything that's assigned to documentation or tagged as documentation, have it just generate emails and send you information because again, you want them pushing information to you. Um, and then review with them. Review the difficult cases, which are the interesting ones. This is an actual, uh, Max and John and I sat in a room to go over, a customer really wanted to know how to do this and build out funnels. And, and this was Max building this out and showing me in diagrams, how does this actually work? What are the use cases? And so I could take this and build my own illustrations, put this into the documentation, and really help things out. Because it also showed me, hey, the illustrate, the, sometimes you really do need pictures to show what's going on. Like these are very complex topics, and it just really helps like that. Learn about your customers. These are some of our customers, and from looking at support tickets, talking to support, I know Sonos loves funnels. Wow, they really get into funnels because they're looking at how do our users go from free to paid and do this, and we want to see what goes on. Uh, Microsoft's all about A-B testing. They want that feature, and that is like their huge thing. Different customers are really are using different pieces, but you can also just get more information. What are people really looking at? You know, are, are a lot of customers looking at a few things? And again, remember that your customer support speaks with your customers every day. You know, they're communicating with them every day. Um, review the ticket metrics. Really look at what kind of things are coming on. Are you getting a lot of documentation issues coming in? That's good or bad. People are reading it. They might find bugs. Maybe they have questions. Figure out what's the path, what's going on, what type. Um, I actually ran, I, had, I ran a support for a couple of years and I put in a little um, measure which just said how com complex is the ticket? High, medium, low. And that was just for me to see is this, oh, I've lost my password, I can't, I can't figure this out. Okay, that's low complexity, here you go, done. Um, high complexity is, I really have this use case and I wanna do this, and here's all my cases, you know, A, B, C, subpart one, two, three, four. That's when you get into complexity, that's when you're really pulling in engineering, customer support, all these you know, different groups, when you really have to go investigate this. <coughs> and that's also what you wanna measure, how difficult are these cases to solve and what kind of things are going on. Join forces. If they have a knowledge base, mine it. Steal everything you can. We should be plagiarists. You know, just no shame in that. We should grab every piece of information we can, push that into the documentation. We need to grab all of that info. Sometimes they'll have an internal knowledge base for their own use. A lot of that really needs to be pushed out to customers and be customer facing, and really, this is how things work. Again, maybe you need to smooth things out, genericize them, find, change the examples. Certainly possible. Uh, like this. 
have them write. Uh, John wrote this up, which was a really clever way to use funnels to figure out user actions. And he just went and wrote this. And I think you could, I mean, you get a snippet of this. There wasn't much I had to do to this, to put this in the docs. I had to do a little bit of editing, formatting, basically. But this is great. Um, again, he wrote it up. It's there. Steal it. Take it. Give it to your customers. And don't bother training. Build templates. Don't give your customer support a gigantic style guide and say, read this, and then you are allowed to write. Uh, not going to work. They're not going to do it. I've tried, trust me. Bad idea. <laughs> if you want to do a style guide, make it as short as possible. Make it at least interesting. Or build templates. This is a super, super, super basic template that I used. Um, actually, I had to rebuild it, but it was kind of like the template I used. But you have an overview solution, really simple, with just some comments in there that get hidden. Says, hey, this is what I want for you. That's all I'm expecting. You know, one big thing it does is it gets them past that fear of the blank page. I think we all know that when you are starting a document from scratch, it's terrifying and it just kills your creativity and any way to even think about this. So customer support's no different. <laughs> you know, they don't want to look at a blank page and just freak the hell out. Um, it also helps organize their thoughts. You know, you can really help them with that. Put in the basic headings. That's not something that they deal with a lot. They're working with customer support tickets. If you're showing them, you know, our documentation's like this, you know, give them some guidance. It also, um, it also ensures consistency, so your customers will see familiar organization. It's less work for you when you need to, when you, if you want to edit this. So now you've done these things. Let's close the loop with support. Bring them in. Ask them to review. Um, again, this is one that Alexis reviewed, and you can see she is very thorough. Um, yes. Kind of painfully so, but it's great, actually, <laughs> because it makes the documentation so much better. She knows how customers are using the product. She knows what questions they're asking. She is able to go in there and, and move things around, delete them, but that's what you want. You want their comments. You want their input. They're seeing these issues. Make them valued reviewers and documentation partners. Keep reviewing the ticket metrics and see how they change. One thing I noticed working with support is that we didn't get fewer documentation tickets, but we had fewer simple tickets. We were getting more complex tickets, which is great because we're moving our users past that introductory phase. We're getting them past that hump. They're using the product. Now, OK, they're, they're answering their simple questions. How do I do this? How do I set up an account? Ah, what are my settings? What do I do? I need permissions. And they're getting more into the use cases and the examples, and really show me more. Knock down silos. We don't need silos. Your customers don't care about your company hire, company structure. They have no interest, and why should they? Who the hell wants to? Who cares? Silos don't help you. They don't help your customers. All it's doing is keeping information in little blocks, and you've got little pieces of information everywhere. And then you, as a good tech writer, as, you know, as you, someone who's building documentation, has to go to each block and pluck little pieces of information. It makes your job so much harder. Knock down the silos. Build <coughs> communication. Build those teams. And share knowledge. We really want to build an information sharing organization within our companies. We want to, to, to really lead that. You want people feeding information to you. you know, in this case, you want support coming to you saying, hey, we've got this use case. It's really cool. I think this would be good for the docs. Oh, I see the docs don't really cover this. How about that? And that's what I actually was dealing with recently um, when one of them was saying, yeah, you've got almost everything here, but you're missing these little pieces. And it was this edge case of using it. But I didn't cover it. And I didn't see it. Support saw it because their cust our customers saw it. They found this, and they brought it to me because, hey, they know I'm actually going to do something with it. And the more we do this, the better you prioritize your tasks. Again, it's, it's, it's prioritizing your tasks, figuring out what is the most important thing to do, and how do you deliver docs that really matter to your customers, that really help them make their jobs better. Now, this actually came about this morning. A very good friend of mine, and wow, it messed up the formatting badly. I've got to fix that. Oh, no, it didn't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I put this in today, and that's why I'm confusing myself. He is a uh, tech writing manager at Integral. He's been a tech writer for 19 years. Um, I've known him since college. 
he became a tech writer because he figured if I can do it, he could totally do it. <laughs> and he was saying, oh, you're talking about docs and support. He's like, this is really cool because I've just been working with support to completely rebuild this piece of content that has, frankly, been a pain in the ass. Um, as he says, complicated, opaque, and I didn't solicit this. this was, we were just talking. And, he's, and this was, I owe him lots of drinks for this. Um, and he said, this, again, support has been dealing with this. He had to get past organizational, um, limita organizational roadblocks, <laughs> that's what I want to say, to get to talk to support and really work with them and get this information. They were thrilled to talk to him because they've been getting customers who are pissed off and finding the same problem and not getting the docs. And this is the key point. We chopped 50 pages into 13. 50 pages of vague theory and confusing tables to 13 pages of laser-focused practical. I mean, they cut it way the hell down because he worked with support, because he had the actual usage information. You know, and, and using the vocabulary that our customers actually use. When you're in docs and you're off in a corner or something, you don't know what that is. You know your internal lingo, and that can be dangerous because your customers might speak the language your customers are speaking. Support knows what that is. He said it's one of the most rewarding, exciting, content-focused work that he's done in 19 years. And I said, I owe him lots of drinks for this one. But this is what we want to get to. You know, if you don't need 50 pages, throwing 50 pages of, at your user, don't do it. 13 pages of folk, you know, <laughs> who wants to read 13 pages rather than 50? I mean, it's, that's exactly what you want. Get it done, get their questions answered. And what this is really building to is, this is how we prioritize. We're talking to support. We're figuring out what is really important, what are the priorities, what really makes our customers' lives better, make them use the product more, make them use the product better, make them buy more. Because we don't just want to move the needle, we want to bury the damn thing. Thank you. Uh, we do use Zendesk now. We're actually moving to Salesforce now. Um, I can I shoot. I'm um, so sorry. So how do you how do you make sure that you implement all of these? Well, by the way, can you just repeat the question? I'm sorry. So how do I so how do I make sure I implement these? I, I know that I should be working with support and doing these things that you're mentioning, but it's so easy to just not do them. <laughs> So that's exactly the case. It's very easy to be isolated, to have those silos, and not have to do it. And it is, it is difficult. They are going to make more work for you. Um, part of it is, again, is really you have to be strict about prioritizing and figure out what really matters. And some of the tasks that you might have had as priorities are going to get knocked down that list. Once you figure out, wait, we've got four customers asking about this thing. That's going to be a priority. You know, we've got one customer who wants to use this sort of edge case, and maybe not, but we've got four customers using this key piece. They don't understand it. We're getting the same questions. That's what you really want to look for. What are you seeing over and over? What is support telling you? Hey, we're getting this a lot of this question. We're getting a lot of people who can't quite figure out, and, and I've seen that. And I, I've documented, again, one piece of our software funnels. It can be fairly complex, but that's also because I will admit, I didn't fully understand it. I didn't fully understand everything that it did. So I documented this talking to engineering, and support comes back and says, nah, not quite. It's a little bit different. Here's, how, here's some examples of customers or how, are you, how customers are using it. And that's actually huge. When you can get actual use cases, and not theoretical, when you get the actual use cases, and again, just, just file off the serial numbers, get, don't use the company names, build your own, whatever. But when you have an actual use case, and that really helps customers understand, oh, I see, that's a good example, and that's a realistic example. So sometimes we will often build examples that, aren't, that are a little bit fantastical. So it, it, it's, it's a hard thing, but it's really be very strict about how you prioritize, and, and very honest, too. It's not always what you want to be doing the most, but what really needs to be done. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let me, uh,